for being here. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy National Letter of Intent signing day. We'll open up the floor. Early day signing. Middle, 24 7 sports. Hi, Ryan. It's hard to quantify, I'm sure, but. Um, Generally speaking, like how many recruits do you think that you guys did not land because of NIL? Uh, that's a good question. Um, depends on when you ask that question and where it started, I guess. Um, no, I, I think, um, you know, it's become part of the conversation for sure. But, um, you know, the 19 guys are already signed, signed today in the early period. I guess it's, you know, 1230 right now. And so it's still an open period to sign. So, you know, we're going to keep swinging on this thing. But, um you know, I think f for me on today, you know, on a day like today, it's like, all right, these 19 guys that have signed right now, they deserve, um, you know, the recognition on a day like today because uh, it's a great group. And I think when you look at the quality of the people that we're bringing in, I think that's the focus right now. Um, I think it has to be for us is like, not so much maybe who we don't get, but who who are we bringing into the program? You know what I mean? And so I'm I'm proud of our guys, and and they're going to have unbelievable opportunity here at Ohio State for sure. And speaking of those guys, what does it say about that? I'm sure you had to. It was a challenge for you. I'm sure other schools are coming after them, offering them money. Um, how big of a challenge was that? And what what does that say about those guys? Uh, it says a lot about our guys. You know, seven guys from Ohio and 19 guys here. I mean, th these these are um, guys who want to be Buckeyes. They and they they know the opportunity here, and there's a lot that comes with deciding on where to go to a school. A lot of these guys did it for the right reasons. Um, you know, what I, what, I, what I mean by that is like focusing on the things that truly matter in this, in this case. And uh, what are those things? First off, it's the development at Ohio State. Uh, it's the ability to come in and get unbelievable education. It's being a part of, um, you know, a program that's going to be in the national championship hunt every year, but also part of an unbelievable culture, culture in the city of Columbus. There's just so many things that come with being a Buckeye that these guys recognized early on. And it's about relationships, and I think our, our coaching staff did an unbelievable job of building relationships throughout this process. Um, you know, because this year was was a unique season. You know, and it's going to be a, a whole other uh, you know unique uh, recruiting cycle next year. And every year it changes. This year certainly has been a lot of changes, but in the end, it comes down to relationships. And, and our guys did a great job of that. Lincoln this year, Devin last year, even like CJ was kind of the same concept of these guys that you maybe had to go back and get later on in the process. And, you know, you're not always, you know, there's not always guaranteed to be somebody who pops up who's maybe Ohio State caliber. Has that maybe at all changed your guys' philosophy and how you guys maybe, you know, attack quarterback and maybe you know, wait a little bit and not going after a guy as early? I think it's a great question and something we always look at, you know, is, is you know, when is the right time to, to go on, on quarterbacks? Is it early in the process? Is it late? Um, there's certainly some great positives to you know, jumping on somebody early. You, know, you identify who that person is early on. But when you, when you get on somebody late like Lincoln, you get to recognize what they did their senior year. Same thing with CJ, same thing with Devin. Um, and you get four, 40 years of work there. And um, I think in, in their situation, that's worked out really well for us. Um, but there's also been times where we've we've recruited, you know, Kyle and, and guys, you know, early on in the process, and that's that works too. So everybody has their own journey, but it's something that we always look at to try to evaluate what gives us the best chance of choosing the best guy for Ohio State and allowing them to choose Ohio State on their own. I know there's an impact if you get a guy in early. Cause sometimes you can build a class around them, but I don't know. Is there an impact the other way when a guy doesn't necessarily work out and you have to kind of change gears a little bit? That's part of the recruiting process now, yeah, is just being able to pivot and react and, and really um, you focus on the guys that um, ultimately sign. That's it. You know, there's, there's just a lot of twists and turns along the way, a lot of emotional roller coasters. But in the end, it's like, okay, who are the guys you bring in? And I think when you look at this list of 19 guys, um, you know, I don't know what rankings or anything like that, but I know if you take, you know, the, the quality of each guy, it's got to be up there as one of the top ones in the country. Else to sign or yeah, yeah, I mean, this is the early signing period. It's uh, 12, I guess, uh, 1230 here. So, you know, there's still a lot going on. There's a long way to February, too. So. Ryan, I think you guys have had five players just between classes decommit since the summer. Does that number concern you? And what do you maybe look at as maybe reasons why there's been a couple more decommitments this year than in the past? I just think it's kind of the, the way of the world right now. Um, you know, some guys decommit two and three times before they actually sign nowadays. And um, I would say if it was 10 years ago, yeah, I'd probably be like, what's going on? But um, right now it's, you know, we, we've had some guys uh, come, you know, change commitments from another school to our school. Uh, it's just, you know, I remember a time when, you know, once somebody committed, everybody just stopped recruiting them. Um, that doesn't 
change anything anymore. So uh, with early recruiting, with all the different things that are out there right now, you know, guys are changing their minds and, and we just have to adapt to it and move on. So um, that just means, you know, when they commit that we just keep recruiting them. And um, it's the same thing with other guys, you know, um, across the country, you know, who are committed. They still kind of look around a little bit and not that, um, you know, I necessarily agree with everything that goes on in that world, but um, it's it's the way things are going. It's the trends that are going on across the country. And, you know, we just have to adapt. Uh, uh, fourth row middle, Pat Murphy, 24-7 sports. Ryan, when we deal with fans and people that, that read our stuff, there's the side that is, Ohio State's lost to Michigan twice in a row. You've lost some guys, as Dan just mentioned, from classes, this, that, and the other thing, the negative side. Then there's, you went 11-1, and one, you're in the college football playoff, you're close to winning a national championship on the other side. I'm curious, from your perspective, from this building's perspective, how you kind of view things at the moment, because we see things from a, a different perspective, and it, if that makes sense. Yeah, Thank no, you. I mean, um, we all have certain expectations and we all have goals and, and um, when you don't reach those goals you have to identify what those things are to, to get them addressed but um, you know we also when you go through times like this too you know you, you recognize um, first off the things you got to get better at but you also it gives you a really good idea of you know where everybody's at in the program you know and and uh, kind of where you stand because when things are going well you know everybody's with you and when something goes wrong you kind of find out where people stand and so um, you know, I think we have a pretty good, pretty good feel for that right now. Um, but I can tell you that the guys in the program have been working their tail off the last month. Um, you know, I think again, when you look at the 19 guys we brought in here, these are some of the, the best players in the country. And you know, these guys understand what's going on here, and they understand uh, what an unbelievable culture we have here. You know, you see, you know, a lot of um, you know transfer going on, everything like that. You look at our team; there's really not a lot of that going on. Why? I think it's because we have a strong culture here. Guys um, appreciate the way that they're being developed and everything like that. And, um, you know, years and seasons and life doesn't always go the way you plan. It's about how you react to it and how you respond to it. And, and that's what our focus is on right now. Uh, we're not going to overreact as, as much as, um, you know, that loss hurts. You know, we're not going to, um, you know, overreact on it. You know, it's, it's, it's not worth it. We have a game against Georgia ahead of us that we're focusing on. Uh, we're hammering recruiting and looking to adapt to what's going on across the country. And, you know, I know that the program's in a great place, even though, you know, we did lose that game and it hurts. I mean, that's, that's our goal every year. You can't walk away from it. Um, but at the end of the day, like, we have some really good people in this program. We have really good talent, really good coaches, and we're recruiting really good people. Yeah, <clears throat> Coach, uh, first I want to start off by mentioning Avery Henry went to social media to talk about his medical challenges and just what's going on there. But with your four-man class with Miles, Austin, Luke, and Josh, what, what do you see there? I mean, what, what, do, what do they bring you as offensive line recruiting is so important every year it, to the system? Yeah, um, I'll start off with Avery. Very difficult time for everybody here. Um, you know, trying to give Avery as much space as uh, we can during this time, but also know that he's got a, a whole uh, team behind him that's going to help him through this fight. You know, our culture is built on fight. He's, he's in for a fight. Um, this came came out of nowhere for him, and his life got rocked. And I, I told the guys after it happened, you know, things like this give you perspective in life too. You know, and this is the reason why you get into get into coaching is to have an impact on young people and help Avery fight this battle. Um, but like we talked about with his family, there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're a Buckeye and. Maybe because along the way, you needed the James Hospital, you needed Buckeye Nation, you needed this team to help you in this fight, and we're here for you. So um, he's going to be down there in Atlanta with us, um, God willing, and, and you know, still be with the team. That's the hope. Um, and, you know, we're just going to be a part of this fight with him. So I know the whole team's behind him. But, um, yeah, going back on, on the, the offensive lineman that we, um, we recruited this year, I thought Justin did an excellent job. We have three offensive linemen here from Ohio and also Miles uh, from Connecticut. I really think all three of them have an have a ability to make an impact right away. Um, you know, these are guys who uh, we've had in camp. We've seen work live. Um, you know, Luke Montgomery, he's going to start to tackle. Um, he's kind of been uh, the leader of this class. He's got a great personality. He and his family have been unbelievable during this process, but he's very, very talented. Um, you can see him on the basketball court, the way he moves his feet. He's got toughness and physicality. Uh, he could play probably all five positions, but we're going to start him at tackle. Um, Austin Sayerveld is is going to start a guard for us. 
very big and strong and powerful guy. You can see when you get up on him, the size of his legs. Um, I think his family said that the, they can't find him a pair of pants, so he either wears sweatpants or shorts. Uh, that's how big his thighs are. Um, but he's very, very powerful and big inside and kind of that road grader you're looking for at guard. Uh, Josh Padilla is going to start at center for us. Uh, this is a guy whose dad is a wrestling coach. He was a wrestler, has all the traits you're looking for in a center, the quickness, the ability to uh, leverage you know, the, the noses and the guys that he's going to have to go against every day. Uh, and he's got a toughness about him. And so uh, you couple that with, with Miles. Um, you know, Miles uh, you know, is from Brunswick School out there in Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, and you, know, you look at his, his length and his athleticism and his size, he's going to start a tackle for us as well. Um, you know, he brings a lot of potential there. And um, so all four of those guys early on, uh, we're excited about. Hopefully we can get these guys going and, and uh, make a push. So. And a quick follow-up. You guys have been very active in the portal, uh, offering some tackles. I know you can't speak specifically about guys, but is there still that need to, to look into the portal and maybe find an impact guy? I mean, especially when we don't know what the future of the tackle position is going to look like after this season? Yes. Yeah, yeah we're definitely going to look at that and, and see the guys who are out there. We're not just going to... Um, you know, add guys to add guys. But uh, if, if, if it's a right for them and it's right for us, um, you know, we're certainly going to look down that road. Yes. Ryan, at this point, um, no running back, no defensive end. Um, <coughs> is there a need to expand the overall search in these types of situations? Uh, obviously, Tony and Larry. Well, we signed uh, Mickens, right? So. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you were considering him more of an outside edge. Yeah, he'll, he'll start at defensive end. Um, with, with Tony and Larry, who are obviously longtime guys, great relationship builders, is, is there a philosophy shift maybe that, like, let's expand the board rather than narrowing in on two or three guys? And if they don't work out, then you find yourself in this position? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Um, I think when you looked at this year at running back, um, you know, we, we, we have a pretty decent, you know, uh, de decent depth there when you looked at you know, Trey and Mayan, and then in a chip, you know, we got to decide if we're going to move him over full time or not. Uh, Dallin and then Evan Pryor has been hurt. So, you know, going into the year, we knew we were already kind of with five guys there, four and a half guys. If we had somebody there that we really liked, we were going to take them. Um, didn't feel like we needed to, but we're always going to look to upgrade if we possibly can or, or add somebody to the roster that we think can help us. So um, it, it didn't work out for us this year. We certainly uh, had a head start and then, and then um, you know, lost a guy, but um, and then at the defensive end position, yeah, I mean, we were we felt like we were in pretty good position with a couple guys. It didn't work out in the end, but um, but we did have a couple um, you know other guys that were recruiting. Certainly, Josh to, to add him to the class was great. Uh, he's a guy that you know he's from Indiana and he's very athletic basketball player. We had him in camp. Um, you know, for him to make the decision down the stretch was big for us. We think he can be a very very good player. And we also like Jason Moore's ability to go inside and outside. He's he's shown that. Uh, he was a player, year, player of the year in the area there, had a big-time season. So um, he, was, he was important to get. And then Cade McDonald inside, as you know, from North Gwinnett, was, was a big ad for us. Um, and we'll just keep, we'll keep recruiting. We'll keep seeing what's out there. But you know, we're always going to swing at the best players in the country. And, um, you know, but, but I'm, glad of the, I'm glad that we have the guys that we have in this class. When you're talking about best in the country, it's hard to say that without talking about Brandon Ennis, who since he was a freshman at American Heritage, was talked about by everyone as the next big thing. Yeah. Very, very, you hear that a lot of people as a freshman, and then they actually live up to it. Yep. But it seems like outside of Luke, he's also become the guy who's the most vocal leader in this group. Can you just speak on how surprising that was, but also how important he's been in <coughs> keeping everything moving? Yeah, I think Brand. well, you look at the, all four of these guys. Um, you look at Brandon, Carnell, um, Noah, and... Um, and Brent Rogers, you know, Bryson Rogers, you know, I think all three, all four of these guys are going to be really good players for us. And all four of them are looking to come in and make an impact. I think, um, you know, Bryson had a big time season this year. His family uh, has ties up here in Ohio, uh, in the Warren area. Um, you know, from early on, he jumped on this thing and was a Buckeye all the way. And um, his loyalty during this whole thing has been excellent. I think he's going to have a really bright future here. Carnell. Um, that was quite a recruiting process. I thought Brian, everybody did a great job there. But uh, he, I think he always knew he wanted to be a Buckeye as well. Uh, he's got a chance to be an you know, impact player for us. Um, Noah, um, you know, from down in North Carolina, um, again, from, from the jump, you know, there was a couple of twists and turns along the way, but he was pretty loyal. And he had a big time season. Um, I think you're really going to like him and just his personality and makeup. 
uh, but but Brandon, yeah, he, he from from the from early on, he just uh, he had a presence about him. He had a leadership early on. Uh, his play this season, bringing him all the way to the state championship again after the year before playing quarterback, you could just tell he was just a competitor. And um, now you see you know, again what he did this year. Uh, he can do so many things. He can play inside. He can play outside. Uh, he's a dynamic player, and like you said, has has leadership ability. And during the process, you know, kind of would communicate to the guys in the class, and you know, in, in these these text chains that these guys would talk to each other, and and he was a big catalyst for this class. How much has NIL and all of the other stuff around taken you away from the relationship building throughout the process, and as opposed to just jumping in at the end? And do you feel like that's impacted the way that some of these things went this year? Oh, I think. Um, Again, every year, like we talked about, it changes. You know, the dynamics change. Uh, but in the end, it comes down to relationships. That's it. And, you know, I, again, I think our staff did a great job this season. And uh, the guys that we've signed in this class, I think we have really good relationships with. Uh, deep right, uh, Matt Parker, Ryan Rowe. Yeah, Ryan, with all of the changes that you know, we keep talking about changes in recruiting, how have you, I guess, kind of put more of an emphasis on keeping the Ohio prospects in Ohio? as well as the Midwestern guys, and then also you talked about um, the three offensive linemen from Ohio that are going to Ohio State, but what about those defensive guys? What do you like about them? How yeah. can they make an impact? Yeah, I, I, um, I think it's more important than ever to make sure that we have uh, guys from Ohio and that we're evaluating all the guys in Ohio at a high level because um, – you know, b between the transfer portal, the combination with NIL, there's just so many things that come with it. And so, um, you know, families and people from Ohio understand what it means to be a Buckeye more than anybody. And so we've got to do a great job of that and developing um, young men and making sure even at a young age we identify them and build them up. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they, we got some really good players in, in, in the state this year. You know, Jermaine Matthews and Malik. Uh, Arvell Reese up in Glenville had an unbelievable season, state champs with with, with coach, and um, all these guys are going to have an impact. We can feel it. Um, you know, nobody stopped recruiting them. You know, up until the last 48 hours, guys were calling them and recruiting them and talking about all kinds of different things, and they stayed loyal. And, and that that's going to matter because that's probably not going to go away because of the transfer portal. So, the loyalty and understanding what it means to be a Buckeye is very very important, and now more than ever. Ryan, we hear the, um, the, the the numbers thrown out for um, players on existing teams, and coaches will say, this guy was offered this by, but I'm not going to say what school. Right. What is the downside <laughs> of a head coach naming another school or collected from that school? I, I just think it's, um, it's just not a road that I certainly want to go down. Um, I just don't think there's any benefit to it. Um, so what do we do? We just focus on, on the guys that we signed. Um, and I hear what you're saying. I do. Um, there's there's a lot of hearsay out there, and a lot of people talking about all kinds of different things, and um, and and that can be uh, that can be frustrating. But um, you know, we're just we're going to focus on our guys right now, and just focus on this team. Is that, I don't want. I'm not asking you to say what to tell me what other coaches are thinking. But is is that the thought process? I just we're going to focus on this, but we're still going to tell people on the radio that it's happening. Like. You want it both ways, but if you're not willing to name names, like, are you getting anything out of it other than just venting? I think it's a great question. I, I think it it deserves conversation. Probably not right now, but yeah. I mean, I, I do. I think um, there's a lot going on out there that needs discussion. Yes, but um, now's not the time. Second row right, <laughs> Rylan. Uh, Ryan, just quickly, you mentioned the possibility of, of Chip possibly sticking at running back. What, what might determine that here over the next couple of weeks and months as you kind of figure that out? I think once we get done with the season, we'll sit down and, and have a conversation with Chip. Um, when when he, he first came in, we were playing linebacker. And then because of the way the season played out at running back, he, he got moved to running back. Uh, we haven't sat down and said, okay, what's the plan for the spring? Um, so I think that's the first thing. We're going to meet with Chip and see what he feels most comfortable doing after kind of doing half and half, I guess. Hypothetically, if you were to stay there, you had five. You would have five. That's probably where you want to be at running back. Right exactly. Now. Exactly. Um, Jermaine Matthews. What did he show you guys when he came up here for that camp and, and kind of got that offer? And then the other thing too is, you know, um, Xavier has really oh, yeah. helped us at running back as, as well. So it gives us a little flexibility there. But uh, Jermaine Matthews, um, I would say this. Um, I, I was really impressed right off the bat. I first met him in, um, early on in the process, but but then when he came to camp, 
um, he he did a great job at camp. I mean, it was a hot day. It was a competitive day. Um, Coach Knowles was going through the drills, and I mean, he was getting worn slick at one point. I'm like, we gotta take it easy on this guy. He's gonna pass out. But he kept going and going and going and competing. And then I thought he had a great year this year, um, just playing really really hard for Win Woods and and Coach Murph, and and uh, just was really impressed with his ability to go compete every single day. And this is another guy who went went through a lot during the recruiting process and fielded a lot of calls and. A lot of people were blowing up that phone, and um, and he was loyal to the Buckeyes, and I think he's going to have a great career here. Uh, far left, uh, Jared Smalley, WCMH. Ryan is one Central Ohio kid, and it's it's a, a name that people know around here. And I'm wondering, um, no one here gets a, an opportunity because of who their family is, et cetera, but he earned it, and I'm wondering how. Yeah. What was his development like over the last year and a half that made you think that was a good fit? I'm glad you asked, because I think that, that ties into what we were talking about before. Will, first off, um, and we know the story with his dad. And so uh, does that matter? Yeah, it does. Actually, you know, it does. Um, but that wasn't going to be a reason why we're going to offer him a scholarship. Um, you know, Will has, uh, in the last year, just absolutely poured it on. Uh, he's put on, uh, poured on some weight. He's poured on, about, I think, about 45 pounds um, and played with an unbelievable motor. We saw that motor in his junior film. Um, but we sat down and explained to him what the expectation was that if he came here. You know, these are the things that we expect out of you to be a Buckeye. And some of those things he and his mom and his family already knew because they had perspective on that, certainly w w with his dad's background. And so, uh, you know, it, it was, I guess it was a little bit of a risk early on because we didn't, we didn't quite know for sure. But, um, you know, he and his mom, quite honestly, they asked, they said, you know, are, are, is, is he really good enough to be a Buckeye? And we said, if, if he does these things, we absolutely think he is. It's a no-brainer now. I mean, the way that he played this season, you talk to anybody who watched them play, uh, he played hard, he played physical with his hair on fire, and just had a lot of production. So uh, he's coming in early, and, and we think he has a chance to be a very, very good player for us. Right behind us, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. <clears throat> Sorry to bounce back on the, the NIL topic. But, so you have um, you know, an athletic department that w was set up and was – ready for this and engaged in it. You have the collectives that are trying to do their part. So just from your perspective, what's missing? Because right now there's, it's obvious that within your staff, within your group, that you're not satisfied with where the program stands right now. Well, I think the, the, all these guys right here are going to have unbelievable opportunity um, in the NIL space and in the way it's designed and um, with, with things that we have set up here. Um, and also just like with our current team and some of the opportunities that are going to be here. So, you know, we can explain to them what some of our guys are doing and then we can explain to them what um, some of the deals our guys have done as examples. And, and I think they've really bought into that and they understand what all that means and the potential for that down the road. So um, as NIL continues to change and move, we're constantly having conversations uh, on a weekly basis on you know, what we need to continue to improve on, what we need to do better, where it's going, and we're going to keep building on it. And it's Ohio State. So um, you know, we should be the best in the country, and we will. Is it a bigger issue for you right now in this process, the recruiting process, than it is in keeping players satisfied once we're here? Um, yeah, that's another good question. I, I would say right now uh, the recruiting space is probably just the most uh, hectic right now and the most competitive, especially as we got closer to signing day. Um, but it's it's across the board right now. Front row middle, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus City. Yeah, uh, Link, Lincoln obviously was kind of a late yep. uh, addition. What do you like about him and the fact that you did get to see him play a senior year? Uh, how much impact did that have? Yeah, it, it had a big impact. Um, multiple sport athlete um, and a very good multiple sport athlete. Did multiple things or uh, you know played multiple sports, but but played them very very well. Uh, liked the way he competed, liked his athleticism, liked his uh, makeup when he came to visit us. You know, uh, came here, saw the environment, and like, I want this. And that's a huge part of it. You know, some, but this isn't for everybody. Being the starting quarterback for Ohio State is not for everybody. It's, it's got some unbelievable things, but there's a lot of things that come with it. He, he kind of looked at it and was like, this is what I want. That was important. I liked his makeup. Um, you know, I thought Corey really did a great job building a relationship with he and his mom. And, um, I think you saw the opportunity here. And um, you combine all those things together, uh, we're excited to have them. Sorry to ask you another NIL question, but <laughs> it, it seems like when I talked to 
recruiting expert basically said it's delayed gratification in terms of Ohio State may not be able to get you X amount up front. But if you become the player that you, if you bet on yourself and become the player that you think you're going to be, it'll pay off in the long run. Is that kind of the pitch right now for you guys? I, I think that that's probably like that anywhere. Um, you know, the, the number one focus it has to be the development here in the end. Um, you know, all of these guys want to have, first off, they want to have great careers at Ohio State. They want to go on to, you know, win championships and beat the team up north and, and win national championships here. That, that's the first thing. Get a great degree. Help them set up their themselves for life after football. All those things are important. Um, but but I also think, you know, along the way, there's, there's going to be, you know, some things that change in their life, and, and they're going to have to adapt to it. But um, But they also know that it's about, an opportunity to go to the NFL too. And if they're not in the right situation, if they're not getting developed, then that's not going to help them reach their end goal. So, um, you know, our focus on the conversation, I guess, you know, to your point is where are you going to be at in three to five years? Certainly there's going to be opportunity now with NIL that was never here before. And certainly Columbus and the state of Ohio and, and Ohio State is going to offer a lot of these opportunities. But where are you going to be in three to five years? Um, you know, not just where you're at right now. And I think all these guys recognize that. Uh, Fourth row middle, Andy Anders, Buckeye Sports Coach. Uh, yes, uh, Calvin Simpson Hunt was a guy you guys got involved with a little later on in the process, was committed to Texas Tech when you offered him. Uh, can you talk about what that evaluation was like? And obviously there's a lot of athletic upside there. Yeah. What, what you saw in him. Yeah. Um, you know, we uh, – I thought Tim Walton did a great job of, you know, evaluating him and Mark Pantone, um, his ability to play in his junior year. But then was really impressed with how he played his senior year. Um, just you know, a very very competitive conference. Um, did a great job of competing every day. Um, has really grown in, in a lot of different areas in the last, you know, even ten months. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're very very excited to have him. He's got a lot of athleticism. He's got good size, uh, great work ethic, and um, you know, I know he wants to come in and compete as well. But um, I think the good thing about coming from the state of Texas and the league that he plays in, he's going against really good players every day. And so you can see, you know, the fact that he should be able to simulate pretty quickly here. Far left, Andrew Lynn, Buckeyes now on the fans only. Uh, with, with how prevalent the transfer portal is now, are there conversations that you're having throughout the process, you know, where you might not be getting a prospect to come now, but kind of just planting those seeds for like, if in the future, if they do enter the transfer portal, like, hey, you know, we know what we offer. How do those conversations go? Yeah, I, I, I can't hit, sit here and tell you that, um, you know, we recruit guys for down the road, but it's all about relationships in the end, and this is a small uh, world, the football world, and we're going to continue to cross paths w with folks and in this this journey along the way. Um, I guess you know Chip would probably be the best example of that. We recruited him, um, not never thinking that uh, he would go to Arizona State, then come back and then be playing for us this year. But um, but that's why you know you always want to make sure you're building relationships and you're handling things the right way, even when it gets competitive and it gets emotional, when maybe something doesn't go exactly the way you think it's it should go or the way it's planned. You know, you always handle yourself in class because you never, never know, and that's life. Um, and so, you know, I guess those opportunities are going to probably happen more and more moving forward. Ryan, you've talked about the positives of the, the guys that picked you and the per player rankings seem pretty high. There's positives there, a lot of NIL and other stuff that swirling around the negativity. So I, I assume this is a mixed bag. But when you look at it, the class as a whole, mm -hmm. how well do you think that you guys addressed what you thought were the pressing needs I think pretty well I mean I, I, I do think you know there's there's a need to have some impact players in the O-line you know um, we're gonna lose some guys there so I think that was important to have a really strong class um, you know we're gonna have to continually build that at, at in the defensive backfield and that's an area that I think we've addressed but will continue to need to, to be addressed um, but I think when you look at the overall, you know, we, we, we could probably use one more defensive lineman in there uh, along the way. Um, I thought it was great to get um, Jelani Thurman as, as a really talented tight end that we think, you know, as we start to get into multiple tight end use like we did this year, it was great to get him. Um, so I, I think we've addressed um, a good portion of our needs. I don't think we're all the way there yet, but, um, but this is going to be a long process all the way through, you know, until we, till we play next year. That 
the next class would be the next opportunity to do right. that. So, I mean, how significantly, I guess, do the transfer portal plans for you change from what maybe you ideally like, which has been pretty concentrated on just one or two, and maybe that's not the case for this, this year. That's it. And, and I think when you look at how many guys um, for us have entered the portal, I think it's only been three uh, since since the portal opened, right? So there hasn't been a lot of guys leaving, so there's not as many spots. You know, some guys, I guess, are going to sign 27 or 30 guys in a class because a lot of guys walk out the door. We haven't had that, so when you look at our numbers, so there's not as many spots available. Um, now that could change as we head into the spring. You know, guys, uh, there's another portal opening here and, and then obviously into the spring, so we'll try to adapt the best we can at that time, ultimately getting to 85. Yeah, Will Smith has a motor. Who would have seen that coming? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, speak on that, the transfer. How different is it recruiting in the transfer portal <clears throat> as opposed to the regular recruiting? Can you explain? I mean, it's number one, y'all are looking for need, right? Yeah. But then can you explain kind of like how you're, how you're pitching it, but what you're looking for? Obviously, I would think immediate impact player, but I may be wrong. Yes, and, and I think – most of the guys who are in the portal have been through the recruiting process, so they don't need to go through the recruiting of dinners and all that. They, they have a certain list of things they're looking for, and, and so do we, and when it matches up, great. I think one of the things that you don't want to do is um, you know, talk to somebody about that hey, you're going to come in here and be a starter right away. Like that's, that's not good for your locker room, and it's just not good policy. You know, Everybody who comes in uh, in that type of role, like Tanner did, like Chip did, um, like Jonah Jackson did, Trey Sermon, they come in, they're going to have to compete. And, uh, you know, that's a very prideful locker room. And you don't just walk into that locker room and say, oh, I'm going to be the starter here. Um, you know, even Justin Fields had to compete for that job. You know, I mean, he did. And that's the way it's going to be. So, um, you know, I think that's a big part of it, too, is making sure that the guys in that room know that the work they put in here is going to matter in the end and making sure that, um, you know, the culture stays strong. But all that being said, we'd be foolish not to upgrade our talent. And thinking back 13, 14 months ago, your quarterback room, <laughs> you know, and we were, we were joking about it even then, you know. How difficult is it? Uh, and and, and I, I guess how much does it weigh on your mind that, uh, you know, the quarterback room now, I'm talking about, you know, if C.J. does go to the NFL, which yep. a lot of people project, uh, how, how queer is it how, how quickly that changed and how tough is it to get a Lincoln – Keen holes to flip from Washington. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it just, you've got to be in that realm too of, of flipping guys. But just, I don't know, just how unsettling is that to know this This is the future going forward, that this is the game you got to play? Yeah, well, we, it's, I think when you look at the last four years, it's kind of been the norm. Yeah. You know, I guess if you probably took every year in the last four to five years in that quarterback room, it's probably, we could probably, you know, really go through a whole story on the whole thing, right? And, um, and I think somebody said at one point when we had, you know, four guys in there, they said, well, it's going to be a really big challenge. And the challenge is when you don't have anybody to put on the field, you know. Um, and so we always just try to do the best we can year in and year out to find the right quarterbacks um, and for that room and then know that, you know, there's going to be a starter, there's going to be a backup, and there's going to hopefully be another backup. Hopefully you can have three guys at least. Difficult nowadays, I think, to have four. Um, and just knowing that the dynamics can change and because the transfer portal, someone can walk in in one second and walk in the room the next. Um, do I necessarily like that? No, I think it should be about development and working through things. And I think that's um, a trait that most great quarterbacks have when you look at the guys who move on and have great success. Certainly guys in the NFL, one of the common traits is guys who work through adversity, work through tough times, play a lot of games, get through it. And I think that, um, you know, that's... That is a challenge, but I guess what you're seeing in a lot of positions at a lot of schools with some of that turnover, like you said, a year in and year out, we've been kind of dealing with that at quarterback here for the last four to five years. So we do the best we can to adapt, um, but it's not always fun. I was going to say, but at the end of spring, for example, we're all looking at it like somebody's going to be your number one quarterback and you're going to be, <laughs> you know, kind of like when Burrow was here, you know, boy, we'd love you to stick around. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, yep. is it? Do you already see that coming? I mean, you, you, even though you're looking at Georgia right now, do you already you, you have to keep that in mind of how do I keep that room strong? Yeah, yeah, you always have to, and and it's it's delicate, but um, you know, if someone becomes the clear uh, clear cut number one, then he becomes the clear cut number one, and, and you go from there. You know, 
Um, sometimes you don't know till they get on the field. You know, you don't know. Um, you know, I think about some of the, the situations we've had like that. You know, we felt like at that moment that we wanted to name Dwayne the starter because we felt like he was the starter at that time. And, and then uh, we did want Joe to leave, and he, it was hard for him to leave, but he did, and, and obviously it worked out great for him. Other guys, you know, other times we, we've, we weren't sure. So um, bowl practice has been good. We've been able to see both Devin and, and Kyle compete, and that's been great. But, you know, that com competition is going to go in through the spring, and we'll kind of see what we got when we get there. Yeah, and one, one last thing, well, NIL space, et cetera. Do, do you sense the NCAA, NCAA is out there – trying to police, keeping up with what's going on in the inducement realm uh, of recruiting, et cetera? Do you, or do you feel like it's just the wide open, wild west right now? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, everyone uses that term. But, um, yeah, I, I haven't seen much in, in terms of the enforcement. Ryan, with, with what you guys are going to lose at tackle, you talked about some of these recruits can be instant impact guys in the offensive line. Not to put too much on Luke Montgomery, but yep. he's a guy you've had a relationship with for a while. Yep. He's a high-level talent. Yep. Could he theoretically compete to start next year? Or philosophically, is it like, man, tackle, true freshman, that's mm. just too much to ask? I don't, I don't know if I want to put that all on him, but we're excited to have him in. We are. And um, the fact that he's coming at mid-year is even more exciting. Talk to him today about it, you know, and, and he's already his, his mind's already going there, which is great. So uh, we'll see. You know, I, I think it's 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 a challenge for for a young guy, but um, you know, we're not going to put it past them to go do it. So we're looking forward to getting him in here and getting to work. Uh, there's been a great history with Glenville High School and Ted Ginn Senior and players coming here. Arvell Reese, that recruitment, the player that he became, just what, what was the process of of you guys knowing? Yeah, we want this guy to be in Columbus. Well, first off, when, when Coach Ginn uh, calls and, and recommends somebody, you know, there better be a good reason why you don't take him. That's the first thing. But then you watch the watch him play on film. I mean, his, his film speaks for itself. He is all over the place. He can do many things. And for his size, he's got power. He's got athleticism. He's productive. Uh, he's one heck of a football player. And, um, you know, Coach was on that one early. He hit that one right, right down the middle. And, you know, he's... Talk to me about some other guys. I mean, he's 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 been done done an unbelievable job, and then for him to win the state championship the way he did this year uh, was was awesome. Uh, really happy for him and the program, and they're in great shape. But um, but Arvell's um, going to be able to really have an impact for us. Um, very productive, and I think the thing that Coach does a great job of is he, he builds him up the right way. He under he understands Ohio State. He understands what it means to be a Buckeye. He understands the rivalry. And so to have somebody like that in our program coming in this year is going to be very important. Not to put too fine a point on it, but with the way things are working right now, do you think it's possible that there are some recruits who will make a financial decision when they commit out of high school and then might be open to transferring after a year with more long-term winning and development things in mind once they – and I'm not saying that's not what I – I might do that too. Um, <laughs> is that – you kind of were generally asked about planting seeds. Is that a reality? Ooh, do I want to go down this road right now? I'm not sure. Um, I would just say this. Um, I, I think these guys have a lot of flexibility right now to do a lot of different things. Um, and, you know, I would say that uh, the second thing, you know, focused on winning and development, all those, that, that's what these guys focused on right here, which is great. Um, but there are a lot of things going on out there that I know – um, you know, it's hard for, for guys to, to walk away from. Um, and, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to make sure we're focused on doing the right thing. And, um, and our guys understand that, knowing that there's great opportunity for these guys. And there's going to be continuing to be great opportunity for these guys. But, but like you said, and nowadays, um, there's a lot of flexibility for players. And last, everything's connected. We understand that you're happy with this group of players who, who want to be here. Um, the quarterback recruiting. You know, people are trying to flip some of your guys, and then, you know, sometimes you got to go out and try to flip somebody else. Mm -hmm. You had a, a 2024 quarterback who was committed and then decommitted. All, everything stitched together. Did any, how did that, what happened with that player or the possibility of that affect anything else you were doing in this quarterback class? And how often are you completely surprised by things like that or how often do you sort of have an idea of well we maybe need to be prepared for something that might change um all of the above yeah i mean i think 
you know, year in and year out, we want to bring in a quarterback. Um, I don't think we've had a year we didn't sign a quarterback. So we always want to sign a quarterback. And it's something that's constantly changing all the time. And we're trying to, you know, project out the best we can, you know, who's going to, um, you know, be somebody that can make an impact uh, early on. And we're not bringing in anybody to be a backup. I think that's the other thing, you know, and, and maybe there's, there's times where, you know, someone can say, well, you're just coming to Ohio State just to, you know, get in line. If, if that's the case, then they don't understand who we're recruiting. Um, I say that a bunch because that's some people's recruiting pitch to a quarterback. Well, don't go there. You know, they have all these other quarterbacks. They have all these five-star quarterbacks in a room. Well, what are they saying about you? They, they obviously don't think you, can, you belong. And every, everybody dreams of playing in the NFL. When you sit in an NFL, um, you know, room, when you're in the preseason, you're going to be with a lot of really good quarterbacks. You're going to have to compete. And the challenge is, if you can make it here, you make it anywhere. And I think that's where Lincoln was really into it and never flinched. I, that, that's just something I just, I really liked about him. You know, he was like, listen, I'll go in that room. I'll compete against anybody. Let's go. It's like, that was, that's awesome. And that's something that I think um, we're excited about and looking forward to getting to work with him. Because him and Brown said the same thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. Is and, it? and I think that there's a lot to be said for that. You know, guys, guys who want to do that. And so um, we want the most competitive guys in the country. Front row middle, uh, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, when you've talked about your approach to the transfer portal and, and not taking guys just to take transfers um, for the sake of doing so, uh, Georgia's kind of maintained a similar approach, the team you're playing in the playoff. Any thought on why on, on this stage the top teams, the top playoff teams are largely built through high school recruiting sort of rather than just 15 transfers on our, on our roster? Yeah, I don't know if I've uh, quite thought about how that fits with both of us, but um, nah, I haven't quite given that much thought. Um, I would say that um, we do a really good job recruiting, and I think we do a really good job of developing. I think Georgia does the same thing. Um, and, and you know, obviously teach their own on the, and their own um, you know philosophy on things, but but I'm sure they're gonna they're looking at the portal just like we are, and and it'll be come a little bit more of a norm, I guess, moving forward. But um, but we're also we, we do a really good job, I think, of identifying the right people who want to be at Ohio State and then developing them. How does the select the selection process when you're looking at guys from the portal versus the high school talent pool? How do those pools of available players typically compare, like in terms of guys who can play at Ohio State? Uh, what do you mean compare? Like, like oh, like, like a high school kid as opposed just, to a portal kid? Fit-wise, fit um, yeah. ways to upgrade your roster. Like, how does the, the, the I mean, the transfer portal each year seems like it's a larger pool. So just kind of wondering how those two pools of talent, like, compare in terms of upgrading your roster. Yeah. Do you find, like, better players at high school you, versus the portal? Well, I, I think question. it's a good question. And I, I've talked to high school coaches about this. You know, some of these high school coaches are very frustrated because some of the guys that would typically be recruited – um, a little bit more are getting less opportunities because more schools are just going portal route. Um, and I think that's interesting because there, I guess there's a lot of teams that really spend more time in the portal than they would recruiting high school players. Um, and that's, that's one of the unintended consequences probably of the, of the transfer portal that nobody thought of. But um, I just think when, when, you're, when you're dealing with the portal, you're dealing with somebody that's two, three, four years older than somebody coming out of high school. But um, sometimes it comes down to need and – um, you know, the, I guess the talent is just depending on who it is and then who you're comparing them against. Uh, second row left, Steve Hellwagen, 24-7 Sports. Yeah, you guys came in today with uh, <clears throat> six guys committed in the secondary. You've signed four of them, could still sign a fifth one maybe uh, sometime later. Just how important was it to address that, those, those four or five positions, because you were playing a lot of veterans in that group this year. You need to kind of replenish a little bit. That's it, yeah. And... Um, and being a three safety defense, you know, we had to, you know, just more numbers there. And we'll continue to look at that and, and try to add on to that because, um, you know, the year before we, we hadn't recruited that. We didn't have multiple years of recruiting to a three safety system. So um, it was important that we, that we did that and we'll continue to do that. Yeah. Next interview phase is in Atlanta in a few days. So the exams are over. You've had five or six days now to drill down on playing in this game against Georgia. Uh, just to maybe switch topics just for a second, just how have these last five or six days gone? Are you happy with your preparation at this point? And just what uh, what are you seeing, I suppose? Um, I, I see a team that, um, you know, realizes that there's not a lot of people give us a chance and have played really hard in practice uh, or prepped really hard in practice. Um, 
I think that um, there's a good look in our guy's eye. Um, you know, we're going to give him a couple of days off for Christmas here, and then we'll get back together down in Atlanta. But um, we, we know what we're in for. We know um, what the challenge is, and we've been working really hard towards it. Uh, today. today, today, yeah. Yeah, so we, we went um, six out of the last seven days, and so um, next time we'll be together is Christmas night down in Atlanta. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, guys.